be entirely honest, I'd hoped I'd be able to say some good things. That this would be worth all the pain and anguish and bullshit I had to go through in order to get it to work on my computer. Okay, PGI. You had almost seven years to get this right. I took three months to get this to work. Let's see if you did it right and what you did wrong. First, a disclaimer. I didn't buy Mech Warrior 5 on the Epic Games Store. I have not violated my Epic Games boycott. This is a Linux port done by some very dedicated fans and distributed in exchange for a receipt code for pre-ordering MechWarrior 5, which even if you did get a refund, I still have the receipt for the original purchase. So I sent them the receipt, they sent me a download, I downloaded it, it works. So, I did pay for the game, but I didn't pay for it through Epic, and I most certainly didn't give Epic any money. Now, I'm going to talk about the positives first and foremost. I'm going to explain why those positives do not outweigh the epic trademark failure this game is. I'm sorry it's a little echoey in here. We still haven't filled my room where the desk and computer are now with stuff. So it's a little echoey and I'm sorry. So, they got the big stompy motor up. Robots, right. Like, just, they did that okay. You are a powerful engine of destruction. As you can see, vehicles... Oh, for fuck's sakes, I already have to talk about a negative. See, in Battletech, by Hairbrain Schemes, and the original tabletop, last published by FASFA, vehicles have sections, segments, if you will. Like battle mechs have a left arm and a left torso and a center torso. Vehicles have a left side, a right side, a front, a back, and a turret. You have to break each set. You have to break a section completely, any section, and the vehicle is destroyed. It blows up. Here, nope. Just overall hit point bar. We had this in Mech Warrior Four. This is literally not moving the bar. <coughs> you had more people. Excuse me for the cough. And more resources and more money and better technology. And this is what I got. Good job, PGI. Good job. At least you maintain the bar. Not really, by the way. Because in Mech Warrior 4, there are 60 different vehicles. Here, there's about 12. <sighs> Back to a positive note. Your mech is responsive. If somewhat, okay, I didn't get very far. Another negative. PGI set the mech speeds to way too goddamn slow. The awesome I'm in, according to Sarna, and their Mech Warrior Online game when you buy the awesome and use the stock engine, has a speed of 54.8 kph. Here, it's 48. Every game mech in the game is slower than the stock Mech Warrior Online mechs. And what Sarna, the best RAM wiki ever invented and maintained, says it should be. You can't upgrade the engines at all. You are stuck at this slower speed. Except the Urban Mech. The Urban Mech goes faster for some reason. But I can't fathom. It goes faster than what it says it should go. It gets up to a whopping 70 kph. Go Irby! You finally got some love. The entire game is slowed down by this and feels so agonizing slow. Here's MechWarrior 4, footage from The Examined Life of Gaming. As you can see, his atlas is doing 53 kph, but it looks and feels like it's so much faster than my awesome that my awesome is like comparing an F1, a, a random street car that grandma's driving to a professional F1 racer. This creates a problem that was in Mech Warrior 4 and Mech Warrior 3. You want big, slow, stompy robots, never faster, smaller ones. Something they promised they would address. How did they try to address it? By implementing a drop tonnage restriction for all the missions based on difficulty! The fuck? That's not 
how you fix that. You make it where I can make the light make a zippy little asshole. But apparently, it's not just every mech is slower, but they were slowed down because the AI can't comprehend what it's doing if the mech is moving too fast. And constantly misses its shots. In testing. Fix your AI then. But, first off, about the drop tonnage problem. You can only take four mechs. A step back from Mech Warrior 4, where you could take eight. But also, I can only put... In order to stop the problem of bigger mechs as missions progress, they implement a drop tonnage to make the missions more artificially challenging. Bad PGI. No. Bad. 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 Don't make me spank you. Don't make me spank you. Back to Stompy Robot Mechs. The PPCs, they are responsive. They work like PPCs should work, like they're described as man-made lightning. Auto cannons hit hard. You have a burst fire auto cannons that you can amount to in case you have trouble hitting with a single shot bang gun. Missions do, missiles do their job. SRM, LRM. Does exactly what it says in the tin. LRM locks onto the target, fires at long range. SRM is just burst shot gonna fuck you. If you equip Artemis with them, even tighter spread burst shot gonna fuck you. Lasers are... You gotta hold it on the target for a full second, which makes them not overpowered and removes the problem we had in Mech Warrior 4 of people mounting eight lasers looking at someone and going, boom, center torso gone. You know, all the things Mech Warrior Online does that PGI made work right after seven years of development. Not to mention the two additional years they had before that, before the original Mech Warrior 5 canceled. Mech Warrior 4 Vengeance did much of this correctly four years ago. You know, Mech Warrior 4, the one that we all loved, that we desperately wanted to see Mech Warrior 5 till PGI bought the rights and Microsoft canceled and closed the studio that was developing Mech Warrior 5. There's a trailer. There's still a trailer for it. Oh, wait, here it is. I digress. If you're actually. This whole footage for the past couple minute rant is the trailer from that. If you actually are interested, by the way, in watching me do an investigation of what happened to Mech Warrior 5, I might dive into that. But you need to leave a comment for me to look at on this video to tell me you want me to do that, or a patron would need to come along and tell me they'd like for me to do that. How difficult would it be for someone also, besides PGI, to produce a Mech Warrior game since Harebrained Schemes made a Battletech game? Maybe there's hope. Maybe there is a way we can convince someone to take this license and do something with it because it's one of the original computer gaming giants. At the same time Doom was coming out, Mech Warrior 1 was com was coming out just a few years later and then we had a golden decade of Mech Warrior games and now we have this. Now, otherwise I'm just going to do a science video where I talk about if we can build battle mechs or not because I love Battletech. I have for years. I was introduced to tabletop gaming via Battletech. Text of the Black Pants Legion has been extremely helpful in helping me figure out what I need to focus on for making a science-based video about if we can build a battle mech. This includes how a neuro helmet works, or how a self-sustaining fusion reactor engine might be constructed. But perhaps an investigation into a cancelled Mech Warrior 5 game might yield some fun results, like how you could make your own. Now, back to what I was doing. This is the area where Mech Warrior 5, once you get out of the big snuffy robot, this is the area where Mech Warrior 5 comes to a screeching halt and goes from, hmm, this is nice, to, oh my god, stop ripping my toenails off, you asshole! Now that you're all done cringing, I'm going to give you some basic repair times, courtesy of the Strategic Operations Battletech book, which is free to download in PDF form. PGI has no excuse for not just opening this book to figure out how long things should take to fix. Armor repair, five minutes per point of armor. Replace blown off limb, 180 minutes. Replace destroyed location, 240 minutes. So a torso that's completely destroyed or an arm or leg that's completely destroyed, about four hours. Damaged actuator, which Mech Warrior 5 doesn't have and Mech Warrior 4 did, 90 minutes. 
Heat sink, 90 minutes. 180 minutes if you're replacing it or pulling it out for a double heat sink. Replace a blown off head, 200 minutes. Replace a single critical weapon, 100 minutes. Two critical weapon, 150. Three critical weapon, 200. Four critical weapon, 250 minutes. There are a bunch more like engine, gyro, engine shielding, engine damage, gyro, life support, etc. MechWarrior 4 had a few of these, but MechWarrior 5 doesn't, and also it's been proven that this can be done with Elite Dangerous where they blow the fucking cockpit glass off if you hit somebody in the cockpit while their shields are down. And also, remember how the original MechWarrior 5 took me some digging, but there's an article that promised you could break cockpit glass and they were going to account for individual system damage. Yeah, MechWarrior 5 that isn't by PGI that promised that. Yeah, MechWarrior 5 that PGI finally produced doesn't. Now, let's take a look at... Oh my god, are you kidding me? What are you high on? Why do you not have enough technicians for this? What is wrong with you? This should not take this long on any given day. PGI decided to arbitrarily cause a self-contained unit who has tons of spare armor, internal structure, extra weapons, heat sinks, etc. and requires no outside support to take a massive increase in repair time for being in the war zone where they get contracts. I mean... Hairbrain Scheme's repair times were obscenely long for Battletech, and it made little sense that I couldn't hire more technicians, bring in more staff, and just raise that tech score to like 70 and be like, yeah, we got this. Your times are amazingly bloated. So the awesome on screen has 265 points of missing armor, which PGI doubled and tripled everything's armor, which makes them all last longer, but has 265 points of armor which takes 1,325 minutes or 22 man hours to fix. It has eight points of internal structure damage, which takes 90 minutes because it's split between two sections twice to fix, or 180 minutes or three man hours. All total, this mech should take 25 man hours to fix. How long does it, the game say it takes to repair? 31 days. Something that, according to Battletech, takes 25 man hours, somehow in PGI land takes a month. Should be three days and an hour. I've had mechs in here tell me they were going to take 190 days to repair, put weapons on, and put armor on it from a salvaged mech. That Warhammer is what took that long. This is just stupid. This is painful. You will often go to jump to a planet only to quick wait four or more times and have to pay your mercenary unit's paychecks three times to fix all your mechs before you drop. Oh, do you know why? Because PGI didn't open a book that's free to download. You don't even have to pay for it. Even Drive Through RPG doesn't charge for Battletech books that are used for the game. They only charge for the lore books. And even then, only if you're getting physical copies. By the way, you're only allowed 11 mechs. It shows 12. It shows 12. But you can't sell mechs in cold storage. I have to leave a slot open, slot a mech in from cold storage, go to the market, sell it on the market, slot, and, and then go back to the metal mechs, slot another mech in from cold storage, go to the market, make sure I change to my mech inventory, scroll down to the mech I want to sell, and sell it. I can't just sell mechs straight from cold storage. I can't have more than 12 mechs. I can't upgrade this ever. I am expected to do four and five long extended mission contracts with just 12 mechs that I can't do repairs between missions. You can eat up 30. 40, 
50 minutes just fighting this interface. And Lord forbid you forget to switch back to your own inventory and accidentally buy two Macs that you just sold. Oh my God, that was a waste of money and it hurt my wallet so much and I wanted to scream. And the nearest autosave was before the last mission I did. Which brings me to the next piece of this pie. Salvage shares and contract negotiations. So many missions will not allow you to put enough salvage shares to salvage a mech you want. Look at this screen. Look at it! I want the Marauder and the Stalkers. I cannot have them because even though I negotiated for the maximum allowed salvage, I can only get the flea, which I would just sell. So what do I get? A bunch of medium lasers and a few pieces of, oh, and shine, that shiny, oh, and machine guns for the blackjack because the AI can't protect themselves and keeps getting it blown up. Your AI partners are terrible, by the way. They have machine guns but fire in bursts, even though the machine guns never generate any heat and the enemy is almost always in range of them. They refuse to allow themselves to generate more than 50% heat because they won't fire till they cool off. They do not understand basic tactics of continue moving or dodging. They will walk up, stand there, fire their weapons, and then they go, oh right, I'm supposed to move. There is no option to order them to eject from a badly damaged mech for you to recover later. Which is an option in Mech Warrior 4 Mercenaries and in Hairbrain Schemes Battletech, by the way. Instead, one of them gets shot up on a war zone where you can stay and rack up a Sebo bonus. You have to leave because he's shot up. Or risk losing the pilot even though he should eject. Basically, what is the point of the AI? They're just bad, awful, and terrible. Both the enemy AI and allied AI, but the allied AI is so much more frustrating when you walk in and you own the battlefield in your mech destroying four or five enemy assault mechs and your AI is having trouble with a stock cicada. What's the point of the AI? Seriously. Mech Warrior 4 and 3 and even rare is it says in Mech Warrior 2, the enemies were not all stock loadouts and you had to run into some real fun surprises sometimes because you'd run up and be like, that's an Annihilator! Why does it have four cost rifles? Here, every mech you run into, every enemy you run into is stock. Even the handcrafted mechs only, maps only use stock mechs. And the maps are random. I swear to God, what is with you and procedural generation? No! Bad PGI. You had five years to develop this game since you announced it, and you fucked it to hell. You could have made a hundred pre-generated maps and just assigned them to various world types with 20 maps for temperate, 20 maps for a jungle, 20 maps for a desert, 20 maps for snow, 20 maps for lava, and if you want to spy purposes, 20 maps for, I don't know, name a place. Oh wait, you developed MechWarrior Online, which has a total of 18 maps. I'm expecting you to put in work with a team that's three times the size of the MechWarrior 4 team. Your maps are not even lore friendly, because if I look up the planet I'm going to, it says it's a lava world according to Sarna, and I go there and I'm fighting in temperate tropics. Or if I go to a temperate tropics, I'm fighting in the snow. They, you guys really like generating snow maps over and over and over and over again and then not applying any heat effects. The fuck? The only time I noticed heat effects was on the lava planets. Otherwise, my mechs cooled and heated up about the same rate. False advertising. You could have just used this map. It's 100% free. There's a link in the description below for it if you want to. You can go around this map and it will show you the planet. It will tell you everything, every major event that ever happened to that planet. It'll tell you everything about that planet. It'll tell you its population. It'll tell you who owned it and when they owned it. It'll tell you the current geography. All the fun shit that you need to know. 
This map is 100% free, and you can cross-check it with Sarna.net. By the way, Sarna.net's best wiki I've ever seen. They make Wikipedia look like the one-man, one-ice-cream-flavored stand in Blazing Saddles compared to a Cold Stone Creamery and a Baskin-Robbins literally being a joint at the hip where you can walk in and on the right is Cold Stone, on the left is Baskin-Robbins, and you're in ice cream heaven. I really want some ice cream. I'm going to drop some money to maintain Sarna.net today. If you want to be mad at me for doing that, you go right ahead. But if you've got a few spare bucks, I would seriously consider giving Sarna.net a few dollars to maintain themselves. Tangent. Back to what we were doing. Right. PGI could have used these free resources to make their maps make sense. They could have handcrafted a bunch of different maps for their procedural generation. Made specific unit drop areas for those maps. And then just had it arrange those maps in five or six different patterns in order to constantly keep us thrown off and constantly keep us on our toes. Instead, it's all procedural. Every bit of it. It's lazy. They did not do any of this. The vehicles rush towards you, knowing if they get too close, you will step on them and die. And they randomly spawn right behind you on areas you just looked at three seconds ago. The mechs, even the light ones, not only move like they're walking through a pit of mech-sized molasses covered in Canadian syrup, but oftentimes stop and turn around when they run into problems with their scripting, not firing their weapons while they do it, and they are just sitting ducks. Your AI allies walk through your target protective objectives and demolish the buildings you're trying to protect. Sometimes you have to do it because, let's face it, they didn't obviously make this procedural generation program make roads big enough for your mech to walk down without the arm just cleaving a building in half. The target, Commander. Further, if you want... I cannot keep going. This is just sloppy. I really hope someone from this massive Battletech community will step in and give this game some goddamn love. Because as it stands, PGI took six extra months to work on this for a grand total of a five-year development cycle, and it's a piece of shit. You had nine months to do a patch and work on it, which in spite of having an extra 15 months development time, in spite of a user having to port this to Linux for me, and they even have it at the most up-to-date patch with the ability to download a new one if you were to launch another patch tomorrow. This is awful. It feels like an extended beta test and not a real game. Compared to previous entries where missions were handcrafted, they had less staff and they took less time to make than this and it's awful. They had worse computer technology. They had worse hardware, worse software. They had to invent some of the things they were trying to get to work from scratch. They didn't even have a base engine to work with. They had to make their own. You had this handed to you on a silver platter, PGI. All you had to do was hire some decent writers, hire two people to war check everything, and then make sure that this game compared to MechWarrior 4 was just better. And you know what? MechWarrior 4 is completely free with none of the hassle. I have to download one patch to get it to work on Windows 7 or a different patch to get it to work on Windows 10 or a different patch to get it to work on Linux or the most modern Apple computer. Just one patch for any op for whatever operating system I'm using and it works fine. Now fix this piece of shit before the community does it for you and makes you look like crap. Oh wait, you gave us a letable editor to do it for you already? Remember kids, so you can support a mod creator, do it. They deserve more money than PGI does right now. If you feel you have to pirate this game, I'm going to tell you, stop, please don't. But if you do it anyway, I'm not going to judge you. If you want to wait for the Steam release, Good, they better include workshop support and better fix this, because MechWarrior 4 had 26 handcrafted missions in the base Vengeance game, 11 more for the Black Knight expansion, which works straight off of the base game, and you could play them completely through one campaign playthrough for a total of 37 missions for the first part of MechWarrior 4. And then the Mercenaries expansion has 64 missions with three unique endings, and that is only if I'm count going through the Solaris Arena once. 
I usually go through that circuit two or three times for salvage and weapons and shit. Am I right? So, yeah, PGI, they did all of that. The people who came before you did all of that with less money, less people, no pre-orders, and inferior computer software and inferior computer hardware, and they had to build more of the base components like the engine it runs in than you did. What you have here is a giant step backwards, and it's pathetic. If you can't tell how upset I am, I don't know why you're here. The co-op feature of this game is the only real improvement, by the way, and it's an amazing improvement. It actually works. It's, the lag is virtually non-existent. There's no input lag. It actually works, you know, like an online game should. Like the online game you've had seven years to develop and publish does. Everything else. Mech customization. Huge step backwards. So restricted that even the models for MechWarrior Online that are in the game, by the way. Oh my god. This modder didn't even have to model the weapons or hard points. Oh, that's sad. Oh, you didn't even use them. Mech combat. It's a mix. Steps forward. Lasers work and are balanced. How the weapons cycle at different times, different damage rates. All that stuff, very well balanced. Everything is slow as fuck. The vehicle suck and your AI is a piece of shit. Oftentimes you have to shoot the same mech over and over and over and over again. Not to mention the fact that when you blow a leg off, the mech is only limping for five seconds and then it's back to running full speed. Also, by the way, legging a mech reduces the chance of collecting it as salvage compared to coring it. That's right, blowing out its center torso, the main part of the mech has a higher chance to be salvaged than blowing two legs off. And it has an even lower chance if you blow their head off of you getting to salvage that mech. It's in the game code. It's actually kind of hilarious. There's actually modders out there who are trying to fix that. <sighs> pilots. The AI is awful. The pilot skills are meaningless because, I'm going to be entirely honest, if I were to max out my pilot skills and the enemy has maxed out pilot skills, what's the fucking point? We increase this by the same amount of damage that our fucking shield does we suddenly have a chance of just randomly ignoring the fact that we were hit and oh yeah we have a lot more heat sink except we don't because the total increase in heat sink from skill level 1 to skill level 10 is a whopping 11% which seems like a lot but when you're mostly working on single heat sinks it's not lastly the lore rating of this game a big Fact F. The story sucks. It's delivered by cardboard characters whose voice acting is sometimes adequate, but often phoned in. The character faces are so poorly animated and so poorly rendered, I can't tell when they're talking sometimes. The story is meaningless. And I feel like it is meaningless to the overall world for spite purposes. The only character who was 100% on was Mech Dad. And he dies in the first five minutes when you finish the tutorial during a scripted screen that you can't control. I don't even have a chance to get attached or understand him as a person or have any form of emotional connection to this man before he dies. The third succession war wages around me and I feel like I'm not even taking part in it. Yes, the story is that bad. Look at MechWarrior 4. You make the difference in the said FedCom Civil War. You decide the winner. You have three fracking endings. You can either go Davian or Steiner or you can look at both of them and go, fuck this, I'm out going to the clans. Here? Nope. Just bad writing with bad voice acting with repeatedly listening to the same piece of dialogue from the same fucking pilots, none of which have any personality. Whereas in MechWarrior 4, I can tell you the difference the moment they start talking between Blaze and Mustang without having to read the subtitle that appears at the bottom of the screen to tell me which pilot's talking. 
By the way, if you're playing Mech Warrior 4, you get Blazing Mustang. First fucking thing you do. I don't care what else you do. You have fun. But you get those two fucking pilots because they're goddamn amazing. If you're curious, I did finish the game. And I watched a couple of other people finish the game to make sure I hadn't missed anything. The lore is awful. And for a setting that was established in the 1980s with stories spanning to 2014 and you drew on almost none of it. They didn't even... I'm sorry. No. PGI, this is a poor excuse for a video game, much less a Battletech Mech Warrior game. And I'm mad about it. Now, if this somehow made it to your desks at PGI, and you legitimately give a fuck, I'm going to make a request of you, PGI. It's very simple. It's actually kind of sweet of me to say this. But would you, you know, um, sit down, take all of this in, and do what Hello Games did. What am I talking about? Just what am I exactly talking about? Well, Hello Games, in spite of everything that went wrong, in spite of No Man's Sky, took No Man's Sky, took all of the discontent and everything that people said, made it into usable data, figured it out, and have now delivered on a long list of game features that were missing, plus game features they never even promised in the first place. And now No Man's Sky is an amazing piece of artwork. Not just an amazing game. And it's the comeback story that we would like to hear. So, PGI, if you are listening... How about you take some of that epic exclusive money and put it to good use? So this has been Fiora the Tank Girl. And to end this video, I'm going to simply display this from Tex and add one more thing to the list of things that Ameris has ruined. Mech Warrior 5. Before you ask how, I'm not going to tell you yet.